Hi, I'm Allie, and um, Nicole's behind the camera, oh, and we thought it was time for you to meet our writing partners. So first, which by writing partners, we just mean our pets, but they're the, the, um, the people that are with us <laughs> while we're writing. Um, come here, bud. This is Leonard. He is a one and a half year old standard poodle, and um, he's not really named for anybody, but we got him around the time that Leonard Cohen died, so we kind of say that he's named for Leonard Cohen, even though that's not 100% accurate. He's a puppy, so while I'm sitting and trying to write, he is usually doing his best to distract me and like he'll bark at me and whatnot. He's starting to learn that like, he kind of goes over in the corner and lays down, but it's still a process. He still thinks he probably should have my attention all the time. Um, this is his duck that he really loves, by the way. He's kind of scared of the camera and the light, so <laughs> I had to like um, tempt him to come in here, I guess. This is Gertie, and Gertie always sits underneath my desk while I write. And she actually, if I come into my office, she'll go under there, so sometimes she motivates me to write. She's like, all right, it's time. We haven't done this in a day or two. Um, yeah, so she doesn't provide any distraction. In fact, she kind of provides a moral support. All right, okay. And Gertie's full name is Gertrude Leia. She's a corgi. Um, she's six years old and she shows a lot. <laughs> but this is where she likes to hang out while I'm writing. And she provides lots of good moral support. Oh, babe. Yeah. And also, she's a Ravenclaw like her mother. So, what made you decide on getting a corgi? My husband actually got Gertie. Um, he planned to get her, like, we went together and everything, but. He had planned to get her, um, he arranged everything, and we got engaged like right before he actually brought her home. So that was his decision, but we both had talked about Corgis before. He always had really big dogs, and I had little, I had a um, poodle right here, a uh, poodle mix named Sam at the time that was pretty small. So um, I was just like, we're gonna always fight if we ever decide to get a new dog. and. We actually both really loved corgis, so it was kind of a good mix. Like, she's small, but she is 30 pounds, and she doesn't act like a small dog. Like, she has a big dog bark and everything. So, it's like a big personality and a little dog. And she's just, like, super loyal and sweet. Um, they're awesome dogs, so I highly recommend them. And what made you decide to get the Pood? The Pood, um, he's kind of a funny one. So. I grew up with poodles and I always really liked them because I, well I grew up with poodle mixes that were just, at the time, they were just mutts, like designer dogs were not a thing in the 80s and 90s. So I really like poodles, they're really smart and they're easy to train and they just are really fun and have a lot of personality. My husband was not huge on poodles until we met a big standard poodle in New York City and then he decided that he liked them too. Um, so we had, when we met, we had three dogs. We had this one, and then my husband had two, he had a, a lab and a golden retriever. And um, they all, the three older dogs kind of died within like a year and a half of each other. So we, still, we lost a lot of dogs like really quickly. And um, he really wanted another big dog. And yeah, that's kind of how it happened. We ended up with Leonard because we were looking for a dog that would get along well with Gertie and she doesn't like other dogs and he, both of his parents were um, service dogs so we knew he would be easy to train and like have a good personality, which is true, he does. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I ended up with Leonard and he's a pretty good combination of the two um, big dogs we had before. Like he's very sweet and he's also super goofy. He's way smarter than both of them, but um, other than that, he's really has a lot of similar characteristics. So, so far, I have one manuscript that I'll probably never do anything with that had a corgi in it, and the one I'm getting ready to work on, I feel like might have a, a little a corgi in there or a poodle. I have read two books with standard poodles where they die. I don't know what that's about, everyone, but stop. So you just need to write the book where the standard poodle lives. Yeah, that's you're saying. true. Yeah. I just, anytime there's a dog in a book, I'm just like, if this dog dies, like, I just, I hate it. Yeah. There was actually a book once I stopped reading because there was like a scene where a dog gets really mistreated and I was like, I'm done. <laughs> so yeah, that's like my goal. In every book, there'll be a dog of, of some sort and it will never die. 
You guys can all come back if any of my books get published and for whatever reason I kill off a dog, you can all come back and be like, yo, listen, we remember you swore. Play this clip in Allie's face. <laughs> there's, um, I don't know if any of you know, there's a website called doesthedogdie.com and I have checked out of movies before because at the beginning it's like there's a dog and I'm like, does the dog die? I'm like, okay, I'm out. I'll still watch them, but I'm just like, mm. I don't get as invested. So anyway, a bit of a dog lover. Clearly. So, yeah. And I just had to show for the very end. Leonard's very lovely. Show them your death and hallows, BB. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Buddy. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. That. He got that from the St. Louis Pride Festival. Oh, go Leonard. All right. So if you have any questions for Allie about her dogs, feel free to leave us a comment down below or you can find her Instagram. Um, I, we will also link Gertie's Instagram below if you want to go follow her. Leonard makes some appearances as well. And now we're going to switch over to meet my writing partners. Okay, so <laughs> we're at my place and I have two cats as you can see. You've probably seen them in the videos. They tend to just crawl around everywhere. Yeah. I'm actually surprised we haven't had more cats behind us. But, so this is the first cat. She's very angry. She hates being held. So this is Buffy. <laughs> she is uh, an American short hair, just whatever, tabby cat. She likes to talk. She only likes to talk when she's angry at you. She tends to lay on my uh, bookshelf that's right next to us. So she, you've seen her probably popping up in videos. She likes to say hi to Allie. Yeah, she comes time. over and puts her little nose right by me. Um, so my husband actually had her before we started going out. Um, so she's basically his cat. She loves him so much. I work from home um, Wednesday through Friday. And when Ryan leaves in the morning, she will sit by the door and basically yell Aww. for him to come back home. <laughs> um, he basically rescued her. He adopted her at six months old from the Humane Society. Um, and so she pretty much bonded to him like really, really Aww. well. So, but yeah, she doesn't like, she's not a very big lap cat. She doesn't like being picked up and held so much. She will come up to you. She lays on Ryan's chest a lot. When he's like watching TV and stuff, she will come and lay down on him. And she also loves sleeping um, with us on the bed, but she's very angry. So I'm just gonna let her go now because <laughs> she's very <laughs> mad at me. Hey! <laughs> and now the other cat was trying to investigate and she just smacked him. <laughs> she poor, poor Spike. She yeah. took it out on him. She did. She took him out on, out on him. Oh, she's so mad. She's like she's twitching. She's so mad. Sorry, cat is needed for the video. <laughs> So, uh, she's so mad. <laughs> she, uh, she's, oh, I figured out her age the other day. I'm pretty sure she's about eight years old. Oh. Um, she's, she's a little grumpy old lady now. She's been, always been a little grump, so. <laughs> she's so mad. Just, yes. Oh, it's really funny. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so this is our other cat. This is Spike. Say hi, Spike. You've probably Aww. heard him a lot in the back of our videos. He actually doesn't mind being held as much. He's very affectionate. He's very vocal, except for right now he's not talking. So, get you over here. Okay, so this is Spike. As you can tell, we have a naming thing going on, Buffy and Spike. Probably shouldn't have named the cat Spike because he does kind of bother Buffy a lot. <laughs> and she does not appreciate it. Um, I don't think he's very like, what are you doing, woman? I don't know what's happening. And he's like all up in your business all the time, yes. right? It's so funny to me because like Leonard is also black. Yes. And is the younger one. He bugs his sister who's older and he's all up in your business. Like, yes. We found out, <laughs> we just, we, we thought about it the other day when we were talking about doing these videos and we thought it was really funny that we have... Allie has two dogs. I have two cats. She has one male dog, one male, one female, one female dog. I have one male cat and one female cat. The female dog is older. The female cat is older. The male pets are both black and they're both very like rambunctious and very like up in your business. Like uh -huh. Allie said, come up here. How old is Spike? So Spike's about seven. Okay. 
Um, and he also, we also got him from the Humane Society. Um, we decided to adopt him after um, my husband and I moved in together into an apartment together. We decided that Buffy seemed like she wanted someone to play with, so we got her. We, we wanted another cat, but we also kind of used her as an excuse, and she didn't really appreciate it that much. But she got used to it. They actually, it's sad because they actually like cuddled a lot more when he was a lot smaller. Oh. And when he was like a lot younger. And then uh, now they, she kind of, they tolerate each other from time to time. Like from time to time they'll like ne lay next to each other. But he just wants to play so much and she just not appreciate it. So it's totally like what you have going on right now as well. Yeah. So. You know what's funny? Um, that book I was talking about on here, We Were Witches. He looks like a cat I know. on the cover. <laughs> so I do have to mention something. Ugh. I do have to mention something that I found out is that if you have a black cat that keeps its ye eyes yellow eyes into adulthood it's probably a Bombay. I found that out randomly um, because I had a friend who had rescued a kitten and someone on her um oh, sorry that's fine someone on her Facebook like let her know like hey if your if your kitten ends up keeping the yellow eyes to adulthood, it's probably a Bombay. So I looked up the characteristics of the Bombay breed and it's like 100% him. Um, very affectionate, very vocal, they love to play, like their um, coat is like really soft, like his coat is so much nicer than Buffy's, like I feel kind of bad sometimes. But yeah, so they're apparently also very intelligent. And yeah, he's just not good at staying in the frame. No, he's not. Because he doesn't. He's, he's purring though. He's he like, just, just wants so you know, to he's cuddle. He's not mad about this. Yeah, no, he he's just good. really wants to cuddle. He also like, talks a lot more usually, but he he's so freaking affectionate. He loves. Oh, it says friendly with strangers, which like anytime we have people over, um, Buffy will run and hide if she doesn't know them or if there's more than like one or two people. She'll run and hide under the bed and like come out later. He just like comes right up to you and is like, pet mm -hmm. me. He is. He does take care of me. He's so sweet. He's my little sweetie. He loves to um, lay on my chest at bed um, at night. He actually like will lay down and he'll stay stand by my side and meow at me until I tell him he can come up because he apparently needs permission at that time. And he'll just like lay across my chest Aww. and purr. Uh, whenever I answer the phone or call someone on my phone, he'll come running, even from the other room, because he somehow knows I'm on the phone. And he'll get on my lap and just like sit there so I can pet Aww. him while I'm on the phone. So, so yeah, those are our writing partners. Um, what do they do when you're writing? If cat things, yes, cat <laughs> things. I was gonna say, like, what can I say? Um, he'll usually try to jump into my lap, mm -hmm. and then sometimes it'll be a little bit annoying because then he wants to like rest his head on my hand, and I'm like, I need that. Yeah. Um, Buffy, if Ryan's at home, Buffy's usually by Ryan because, like I said, she's, like, super in love with him. He'll either hang out with me or he'll go hang out. And if it's, like, light outside, lighter outside, he'll go hang out in the sun. So, he loves laying in the sun. It's so Aww. funny. But, uh, yeah, they're not as, uh, part of the writing process as your dogs are, but they're definitely around. Yeah. So. They're cats. They're cats. It seems like they're not quite as much of a distraction as no. a certain poodle. No. If anything, okay. they probably cause more of a distraction when it comes to filming videos mm. than it does to writing. So, because, yeah, they're in videos a lot more, so. They are special guests. Yes, they are. So, I hope that was kind of an enjoyable, fun video. Um, we think it was. Yes. We're, we love our pets. We love our pets, and we basically try to figure out what's the way we could tie it to our channel. And we... I always like hearing about other people's pets. Yes. Like there are a few um, writing YouTubers that'll show their pets sometimes. I'm always like, yay, the dog's on there, yes. the cat or whatever, so. Yeah, so do you have a pet? Uh, do you have a writing partner? Do you have a human writing <laughs> partner or an animal writing partner? <laughs> we really just want to hear about the animal ones though, so. Yeah, yeah so share, the animal. share your pets with us. I'm specifically interested in anyone that has a bird that hangs out with them. That's actually, I was thinking um, the same thing. Kim Chance posted a video and it was like, all these writers and one guy had a bird and I was like why isn't he on YouTube yes. I want to watch him and that bird yes do you have a bird that hangs out on your shoulder because we want to know about it the only reason I don't have a bird is because I had a lab um, my husband and I had a lab that would have eaten a bird and now I'm pretty sure Leonard would so yes, I'm one day sure I will have a too. dog that won't eat a bird and I will <laughs> rescue one because that's like a dream of mine yeah so. anyway yeah I can't have birds I have cats, cats yeah <laughs> 
incompatible. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> well, anyway, that's it for our video, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.